So before we look at the stages of developing a rubric, it's important to understand why and when to use a rubric, and also to look at the components of a rubric. So we must first understand that a rubric is a tool that is used when assessing whenever there is no right or wrong answer or correct or incorrect answer. When you want to assess more than just content, you use a rubric then to measure a learner's level of cognitive thinking. So for example, their understanding, their creativity, critical thinking, and so on. Rubrics are really helpful to teachers because they provide a clear breakdown and progression of skills for a particular task. And this then guides the teacher when it comes to actually marking the task. A rubric can also communicate to the learner what is expected of them and what will actually be assessed. So rubrics may not all look the same, but they should have key elements that make up this rubric. In this course, we're going to now look at the key elements and how you can create an effective rubric. So let's first look at when should we be using a rubric? Well, the first is you need to ask yourself, do I want to assess the learner's ability rather than factual information? That's the key question you've got to ask yourself. The next question you've got to ask yourself is, do I want to assess the learner's understanding and interpretation of the actual content? Do I want to assess skills? And then do I need a measure of the learner's values and attitudes? Do I want to be able to show the learners where they went wrong after you have marked and assessed the task? And then lastly, do I want to show the learners how they can improve? Now, all of these aspects, when does writing yes or no, or answering incorrect or correct, learners don't get this feedback. And you're not always able to assess skills or interpretation and understanding. So this is, these are very important questions that you must ask yourself when setting up a task and deciding should you be using a rubric or not. Now we're going to start by looking at the steps in developing a rubric and these are just the overall steps because after this in the next module you'll see we take each of these steps step by step and look at how do we develop them. So this is really just an overall view and you'll notice that afterwards the components of the rubrics that we look at relate directly to these steps. So the first step is to identify the task expectation. Now the task expectation is Actually, what do you want the learners to show and do in this task? And it's very important to identify this at the beginning, because if you don't have a clear idea of what you want from the learners, often the rubric doesn't fit the assessment of the task. So where do we get this from? Well, the first is we look at curriculum content. What is required in the curriculum? Then we say, well, what required level of understanding? What do we require from the learners in how much understanding they have of a concept or content? Then obviously we need to look at the skills, values and attitudes that you require for this task. And then we must never forget the critical and developmental outcomes because these are the skills that we should be putting into most of our tasks that we expect from the learners. Once we've identified this task expectation, then the rest of the rubric follows on. So the next step is to determine the criteria. Now the determining of the criteria comes from the task expectation. Once you've said what you want from the learners, then you can break down the actual task expectation into specific criteria. Once you've done that, you need to determine the levels. Now the levels come from the cognition or the level of cognition you require from the learners. So remember cognition is about the processing and the knowledge um, and, and the understanding that the learners have for a particular concept. So you want to make sure that you've got these different levels and you've identified them clearly. And we've got to make sure that the levels depict skills and not content. From there, we look at what we call the descriptors. And these descriptors basically explain each level against the criteria. As I said, we'll look at these in more detail a bit later. So here, when it comes to each explaining each level, you're breaking down the levels of cognition for each criteria. Then we look at ass assigning a score, and this comes right at the end. And what this does is it quantifies the descriptor. This is not necessary in all rubrics. Sometimes you'll find you don't necessarily need a score for it. So it might be, particularly in your foundation phase or any practical tasks, you just want an assessment of the learner and not necessarily a score for it. So now that we've looked at the steps in developing ru a rubric, let's look at how this fits in to the actual components of a rubric. And hopefully by the end of this 
these components, it'll have a, give you a bit of a clear idea of where everything fits in. Right, so this structure should look a little bit more familiar to you. And now we're going to look at the components. So the first is the task expectation. Now this doesn't actually go on the rubric itself, but it needs to be very clear. And often I say to people, write this down, make sure it's clear to everyone so that when you're setting up your rubric, you know what you're looking for from the start. So once we've got our ex task expectation, we said you need to identify the criteria. And remember the criteria comes from the task expectation. And this goes down the left-hand side of the rubric. Then we just divide up our levels. So remember with the levels, we said we need to now look at which cognitive levels the criterion represents or each criterion has. So you're going to break down these levels in terms of levels of cognition for each criteria. Once you've done that, you then put in your descriptors. Now these descriptors will explain each level against the criteria. This is what takes the longest time, is looking at how do we define each of these descriptors. And then, of course, at the end, we can put in a score and quantify each of these descriptors. So that's how your final rubric will look. It's important that you go through each of these stages, because otherwise, you're not going to have a complete, effective measure of the learner's ability. Now, to end off this introduction, let us have a look at some of the facts about rubrics. The first is, rubrics we must remember measure a level of cognitive ability. So it's important when we're drawing it up that we have this in the back of our mind all the time. It is not just right or wrong. What does this do? This helps us to assess the application of knowledge. So yes, the learners might have knowledge, but how well can they apply it? How much understanding do they actually have of this knowledge? then rubrics ha can have any number of levels. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we're looking at levels and how to develop them. Rubrics can also have any number of criteria or descriptors. Nothing is cast in stone, but you've got to make sure that it's appropriate to the original task that you've set. And most importantly, rubrics should be set out and developed so they are developmental for the learners and also that they indicate the highest possible quality. Because by doing this, you can ensure learners how they can improve in their work and how they could have done better in the task.